New year, new me, new football therapy, and new Chelsea. What's happening everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. How are you all doing? Happy New Year. The turn of the decade, 2020. Loads of new exciting things are going to happen in football like transfers, wins, losses, VAR, weekly discussion debates that make people really sad. What else? Uh, Solskjaer may be getting sacked. <laughs> I don't know, but we're talking about Chelsea news today. What's up? Welcome back to the channel. How you all doing? I hope you're all doing well. Sorry there was no video on New Year's Day, but I was absolutely hanging out of my ass. <laughs> there was no way I was delivering good content to you guys on New Year's Day, but I'm back. Nearly fully back. I'm back. I'm doing a video. So remember to subscribe to Football Therapy if you've not yet done so. Please do click the bell notifications icon, the like button, Comment down below, all that luck. All right, let's get into it. Updates on news. Let's start with some positive feel-good Academy Factor stuff. And I'm not talking about Callum hudson Adoy. He's been looking a bit better lately, which he has. We're gonna talk about Conor Gallagher. Man's been down in the championship, tearing stuff up on loan, and now people are interested in him. Now I'm assuming this is for a loan move, a positive loan move. A couple of other championship clubs that perhaps are gonna to look to go up, maybe like West Brom won him, that might be interesting in the way they're playing under Billage. But also, Burnley apparently won him, which is a Premier League team, which would be a superb loan, although the way Burnley play, I'm not sure for an attacking number 10, that would be so productive. There is no doubt in my fragile tiny mind <laughs> that Lampard and Jody and indeed Joe Edwards are not thinking about Conor Gallagher moving forward. He's doing very, very well. He's just another one to sort of come off the, uh, what's the word? Uh, Chelsea conveyor belt of success, of a youthful, talented exuberance. They pick it one off every now and again, put them in the Chelsea first team. Well. When I say every now and again, I mean this season only. And Gallagher looks like the next one to come off. I've been talking about buying a super number 10, but what does that mean for Conor Gallagher? The thing is, you can't always assume these kids are gonna come in and just be top four prem quality. They need to be in the squad, rotated in and out, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, I think alone's best, he's still very young. Right, Manchester City and Pep Guardiola want Ben Chilwell, and it's no surprise. They could really do with a left back. Now, I remember when I first saw Mendy play for Manchester City, I was like, damn, this one player changes the whole dynamic of how they play. Um, he's been a bit hot and cold for them, really injured, so since then, I haven't really thought about it. And the fact how they played Zinchenko there, they played loads of people at left back that they probably need a top tier elite left back. So I understand. He hasn't spent massively in a while, Pep. So I'm a bit worried they could just swoop in and take Chilwell. And although maybe he might like the idea of joining Chelsea, he might be like, well, I prefer the idea of going to play under Pep Guardiola. <laughs> it is interesting though. A lot of people have been thinking, hmm, is Chilwell really the real deal? Is he the best left back that Chelsea could buy? I mean, the bar is set so, so high for fullbacks now in terms of how positive they can be for the team. I mean, look at that game Trent Alexander-Arnold played. I mean, obviously, both of Liverpool's fullbacks are excellent, but when man is running the game from right back and just looking man of the match performance, you think, I want one of those. <laughs> I personally have high, high, high hopes for Reese James, especially in Chelsea's draw to Brighton when he was getting into the game defensively and uh, offensively, he was superb. He was breaking Brighton players. He was making inverted runs and underlapping with Willian on the right flank. He looked wicked, man. I've got high, high hopes for Reese James. I think this is why Tariq Lamptey was a little bit concerned. Maybe if Lamptey can be second fullback to Reese James, he'll be fine. And as Pluqueta, like, sort of just sort of fades away into a utility player. I digress. Chelsea need a left back. On that, apparently, into Milan, Antonio Conte, who I think originally bought Emerson to Chelsea Football Club, maybe in a January transfer window? It's not important. Point being, willing to pay 25 million to Chelsea Football Club for him, which maybe they would accept considering they're looking for a first starting replacement. Who knows, maybe that starting bid is open to negotiation and Chelsea can squeeze a little bit more out of Inter Milan. 
although they've already spent a lot with Antonio Conte. I think they might have broke their transfer record twice in his first window. Still, they're very, very, very much in shout with a Scudetto title win this season, so if he wants to play in January, they might be like, okay, please win the league. That could be Emerson. Now, I really, really liked Emerson at the beginning of the season. I still think he's a very talented player, but it's a results game, and when your performances are bad, you're getting hooked. I know, granted, to change formations, but against the Bamiyang, he let him go defensively. He's not been combining as well as he could going forward, like in games past at the beginning of the season. Generally, I think Emerson probably, you know, actually right. In this, if you told me this at the beginning of the season, but now seems very much like a reality, if someone said, look, Jan, come the January transfer window, you can make transfers, I'd go wicked, but Emerson say Chelsea's near best player at the beginning of the season. And I'd be like, who are we buying, man? Oh, dude, we're going to sell Emerson and replace him because that's a massive problem. I'd be like, oh, no way, what? And then you might say, you know what, Jan, we're keeping Marcus Alonso for a left wing back option. So I might be like, all right, so you're selling Emerson, who's been like our standout defender, keeping Alonso. Funny how things change oh so quickly. So Ben Chilwell, I mean, fits the bill. Apparently, the, is it the Daily Express or the Telegraph, one or the other, <laughs> good reporting, are saying that Chilwell is worth 60 million pounds. 60 million, I guess so. Not the transfer record for a defender, that is Harry Maguire at 80 million pounds. Chilwell is of course very highly rated and England's starting left back. Let's be honest, you'd take him. <laughs> Premier League proven, good going forwards, good going backwards, generally looks like he can adapt and improve, would be a good acquisition for Chelsea, but now Manchester City are interested. Hmm. Obviously, watch this space, I'll keep you updated as we move on to the next story. And his name is Fyodor Chalov, the Siska Moscow, yes, Siska, apparently not S-C-S-K-A, Siska or Chiska. Anyway, Russian striker, 21 year old for 20 million pounds. A Giroud replacement, no doubt. Apparently 15 goals in the league last season. Great for a backup striker. But he got five goals in like 18 appearances this season. Panic buy, 21 million pounds or 20 million pounds. Doesn't really excite me. Not at all. To be honest, this for me would scream backup, backup striker. Olivier Giroud is basically going in January, he's almost he's basically confirmed it himself, so Chelsea are like, we need another striker, it doesn't need to be Timo Werner maybe, seeing as Tammy's going to be our starting striker, what are we going to do? Fyodor, Fyodor, Chalov, Chalov, for me, that's a no Jeff, I don't fancy that, poor return in the Russian Premier League, which for that team as well, Siska, they're a big team man, doesn't sound like a good idea, obviously it's one of those players that might fit the player profile, hence Quite obscure target. Mm, I just wanted to mention it because his name's come up a few times and I'm not sure I've mentioned it on Football Therapy, but that would be a January signing that I do not get excited about. I'd much prefer Moussa Dembele or, you know, Josh Madger, some other people I've talked about, and obviously the big goat himself, Timo Werner, but I think that's a bit of a pipe dream, man, at least at the moment. Segway of Giroud leaving, maybe doing a swap deal to Crystal Palace for Wilfred Zaha plus loads of money. Wait, Giroud plus loads of money for Wilfred Zaha. After Frank Lampard's, I was going to say defeat, it feels like it, draw against Brighton. Hold on, can we just take a second here and mention how Chelsea had such an abject performance against Brighton. I mean, Reese James was good, Kepa was good, but Chelsea were really poor against Brighton. Got a point somehow pulled away from all the top four race contenders this game week. Wolves drop points, United drop points, Tottenham drop points. What a result and a weird league. Funny. Right, what was I saying? What was I saying? Oh yeah, Zaha. <laughs> so Frank Lampard was asked about transfers. Frank, you just drop points to Brighton. You buy Wilfred Zaha, mate. Managers hate these questions anyway, especially at times like these. I think there was some indication of Giroud going one way, Zaha going the other way. Lampard is a very professional, media savvy guy. Always has been, has been ever since he was a player and he did these press conferences, whether he was captaining a side, he would just speak very well. Guess he's the first of that sort of really well media trained generation. I'll digress again. Basically, he was like, no Zaha. <laughs> In a few more words, but he sort of insinuated 
I don't want to talk about Zaha, he's not a Chelsea player. If we ever do deals, it will be behind closed doors. But he also said, wait, what did he say? Hold on. I wouldn't talk about Zaha, and the idea of that deal is something that I've never considered. I have never considered Zaha. I've never considered the idea of Zaha. Go away. So, no Zaha. <laughs> At least, you know, whatever, that's what he said. Does that, is that mean he's definitely not in the works? Even if Frank Lampard hasn't considered Zaha, the club, Chelsea, the scouts, consider Zaha. It's just the way it works. Frank Lampard's head coach, he gets consulted. The club are looking at players. They have an ethos and this is how, this is how big European clubs are run now. I personally was warming to the concept of Zaha purely because we're looking for someone to drive forward and play between the lines and be a bit different, who's really experienced in the Premier League and can deal with the physicality. Enter Wilf Zaha. Look at that game against Brighton again, just calling out for someone to make an inverted run and combine. Zaha, dribble in the box, win a penalty. Zaha. Now, realistically, if it is going to be 80 million and it isn't potentially a player that you want to be starting forever if Chelsea get these new young superstar wingers to grow like Hudson Odoi and Pulisic who are much younger, I get it. Why would you spend 80 million pounds on a sort of six months boost season player? I think I was just kind of like something needs to happen but I guess something maybe is going to happen and the club know what they're doing, Frank Lampard knows what he's doing but it does sound like he's not keen at all on Wilf Zaha. Anyway gang, that's today's video. What do you think? Get down in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on today's video. Remember to like the video, sub if you're new, do your commenting, tell your friends about football therapy, subscribe to my other channel Yam Plays if you want more content of me playing video games, link in the top of the description. You can of course follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. But that's it from me, guys. You lot enjoy the football. I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle. Bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.